but I'm just gonna get into it, like how to main, how to main a character, or how to find a main for your character, and not only that, but how to innovate your character and like get better at your character. The first thing that you would normally look for in a character is like one, like someone that you have a lot of fun with, and that that main thing is like you have to figure out like why certain things are fun for you. So like maybe it's like you love playing Taros, and it's like why? Because he kills super early. So it's like okay, you want like hard hitting characters that can kill early. So you would like to play like Taros. You would like to play a lot of Axe, probably Hammer, Lance Cannon, maybe some Olgrim, maybe some Zol for sure. But then you also have like the the fast like string characters that have like low defense but like a lot of speed. Like you got Thea, nine speed Thea. You have characters like Lucian. Um, there's plenty of different characters. You have Artemis, characters with just like a lot of speed, low defense. They're not that strong that much, but like they have like a lot of like string potential like so maybe you would look at characters like that the main thing is like looking for what you want in a weapon so me personally i like to have a lot of coverage so i like to play spear because i like to do like i like dodge punishes a lot like being able to catch someone's dodge and like punish them up for like a lot of damage and while also having big hitboxes i love to have big hitboxes like to me spear is like a combination of axe and scythe how would you go about innovating a character that's considered to be balanced or basic would you just try to take advantage of their strengths alone or would you have to find and lab some crazy shit and go in from there you don't have to lab crazy tech but there's plenty of optimizations that people just don't know about so i i talked about this, like i talked about this in one of my shorts but like most characters do the same thing like how I was saying, like spirit and light, it's like axe and light, and it's like sword and light. A lot of things do the same thing. So the, the first step to picking your character, and once you figure it out, is like, okay, what do I do as my stacked option? Or like, what do I do when someone's in front of me? So like, let's say we're in neutral here. What's my grounded like attack? Axe and light. Okay, good. What if someone's in the air? Luckily, axe has an anterior. You have axe D light. So you're like, okay, that's cool. Check. So you have to figure out like, do I have a stacked option? Do I have an anterior? Do I have like, um things like that do i have like a combo starter a setup attack do i have a true kill confirm things like that so first you have to figure out like the the really really fundamental things because you, you need that baseline because if you don't have the baseline you can't figure out anything advanced so it's like do i have a grounded attack that hits in front of me does it hit stacked and if it doesn't hit stacked then you're gonna need to do something else when they go stack with you axe hit stacked like basically so we can have axes like and like as hitting stacked so you won't have to worry about someone like getting in your dead zone because they're like not really there's not really a dead zone on that so it's like do i have an anti -air? yes check so we have an anti -air here do i have a, a combo starter with a true combo yes and it's a side light but it makes you walk forward so it's like okay i can use this to overshoot so you can use an axe ally to like overshoot and read people that are like backing up away from you because you're dashing towards them with it and then it's like this is a true combo yes okay true combos so like now that you know like your fundamental options of what you can just do in neutral, you'll be able to look at certain things and um have them as like your baseline. So so for spear, just like this is an example of a different weapon. What would you do if someone's in front of you on the ground? You end light them, right? Um spear delight. light. So we do have an anti-air, but the thing is our end light does not hit stacked. So we do have a dead zone right here. If our opponent is pressuring us and they are over here and they get like right here in front of us, what can we do? Can we side light this? No, we can't. Because satellite is also like axe satellite where it makes you go, uh, go forward. So we can't satellite this and we can't light it either. So what do you do? This is where you have to start like looking at certain things. So what can you do? Jump down there. You could do jump fast fall in there. Or if you're playing a character with a sig, you could do a D sig. Um, you could do ground pound obviously, but that's not going to be too optimal unless like you're trying to kill them. So after you have to find out these um certain things that are your options on your character. So that, that's like the, the first first step. Once you like find the character that you want to play and you want to get better at it, you have to figure out like what are all the fundamental options that I can do on this character. But the main things that you want to look for in a character that makes them like really good or really optimal are things like an anti-air um, and a end light that hits stacked. Not necessarily like an end light, but a attack that will hit in front of you that can also hit stacked. And if you don't have that, you need an aerial that can quickly hit stacked, like a jump down air. Like, you'll see how people that play guns will do a jump down there to cover themselves. So, that's the first step to, um, trying to, like, figure out, like, the fundamentals of your character. So, I guess now we can get into, like, further lag, like, labbing and, like, trying to figure out, like, the strong suits of your character and, like, optimizations. The first thing that you would normally look for are dodge punishes with your character. Maybe Brynn isn't a good example for this, but, like, the first thing is, like, off of those confirmed attacks, um... Do I have like some kind of sig punish combo that I can do? Like 
for example, on Spear, can I do a, a D-Light and the N-Sig on Brin? No, you can't because they, it's jumpable. So, like, the first thing is to see, do I have any unjumpable, like, guaranteed Sig combo? Um, and I think for, a, like, almost half the cast, like, you can. Um, even on characters, like, we've never seen before. Like, there's plenty of combos you can do on most characters that are, like, very niche. It depends how niche you really want to get with it. Like, I'm pretty sure on SCO, you could do Sword, um, Sword Nair into GC Ensig when they don't have a dodge. Like, there are things like that. Um, depending on, like, how optimal or how, like, niche you want it to get. But for the most part, it's, like, off of your combo, um, tools. Like, things like Orb D-Light or Orb Sidelight or Spear Sidelight, Spear D-Light. The first thing you would look at is that, like, do I have any Sig Punish combos? And if the answer is no, um... It's fine, like it's fine. That doesn't mean that your character's not gonna have any sauce or anything like that. Um, that just means that there's like you have to like look at what your sigs do. So like the same way you looked at what your um attacks do on your weapon, what did the sigs do? What is Nsig used for? It's basically a replacement for Axe Delight. So any any position where you would do an Axe Delight, you could just do an Nsig and kill them. So what's good about n62 on brin is that you can reverse it so like if you want to slide behind them and cross up while having an active hitbox in front of you you could do a reverse n sig and it actually hits like way more grounded than um a actually would and it hits behind you it, like it's like barely behind you it's kind of crazy you would look for like what is the purpose of the sig so it's an anti-air so if my opponent's in the air or if they're on the ground like if they're just kind of in this like empty op zone i could cover with the n sig here because it hits above me too like straight above so that's good. That, that's what that sig is for. Side sig. This is basically the same thing as like axe and light or side light. If they're just in front of me and I want to just cover the ground. So this is like for a hard read. So like let's say your opponent here is at like red. And oh yeah, I have the position thing over here. Let's say your opponent's at red and they're over here, right? And you're you have the stage control, so like you're approaching them like this, and you know that they're not gonna go for a a, a panic jump like this because you know that they don't want to be scared of you. Because if you're fighting someone who's like a pro or really good at the game, pros don't panic jump. So if you're in this position where like your opponent is in the corner, and you know they're not gonna jump, you can just walk up and side to them. And the bigger the side stick and the more active frames, the better. And you can do this on literally any character that has like a forward hitting sig, rolling lance d sig, ember bow side sig, anything like that. Ember Katara side sick, Lord Vrax land side sick. Any side sick that's just like huge and covers the ground, you can use the hard read people who aren't panic jumping. And then for our worth a perfect dodge into my, your side sick into sword dealer recovery. Am I just cooked? I mean, you might like maybe you're fighting Jesus Christ, then maybe you can bait out the dodge. Maybe that just means they dodge when they're pressured and you can bait out the dodge, you know? No one's perfect. So, all right, so that brings us to our next sig, our axe D sig. Now this sig is like kind of questionable, but it's, it's still not bad. There's some uses for this sig because it sweeps backwards. So if you happen to be in like a position where your opponent is crossing you up, or maybe like you're gonna cross up your opponent, so you're doing the crossing up. A sweep like this could be extremely good. It has a lot of active frames and kills super early. So if you if you find your opponent like dodging on the ground, like when you approach them. So let's say you approach the uh, Atori, right? And they do his panic spot dodge. And then you could just reverse D sig to cover a cross up at the same time. So like. They spot dodge and not only are you catching the spot dodge but if they spot dodge and then also go behind you so like if they spot dodge here and then like dash in front of you the d sig will still hit and it's also very good for edge guard you can do things like this and kill them to read cross ups on the stage like let's say you're edge guarding the atori right here um you can just read the cross up like that because it catches like this so just finding what like what is the use for the sig same for a spear we can look at spear too so same thing for side sig if you're trying if you're trying to hardcore read your opponent going grounded perfect sig like your panic like if you know your opponent is not going to panic jump or if you know that your opponent's going to do a whiff and spot dodge so let's say your opponent does a spear and light and then they panic spot dodge like this you could just hardcore read that with the side sig and kill them so that's what that would be used for it's a punish tool it's a grounded read it's a spot dodge punish tool what about um or you can even read a um a dodge down with this so like let's say you do a uh you can do this into a reverse side sig very good dodge down read but then yeah we can look at the end sig it's just an end tier. It's the same thing you would do with Spear D-Light. It's just that you're doing an end sig instead. Pretty um, self-explanatory. You can be down here and do a GC end sig. Makes sense. Now D-Sig, um, this is like a pretty common type of sig where your D-Sig is like a, a 360 kind of hitbox, like a stack hitbox. Uh, most Spear characters have this kind of sig where like it hits um stacked with you. So like 
like how I was saying, spear and light does not hit stacked. You can desig in this situation. That's like these are the uses for all the sigs. So even though we don't have any guaranteed sig confirms, we still have like a lot of different things like in terms of like utility for our character. But the thing is, if you never looked at your character sigs and, and like figured out what does what and why, you won't. You'll you'll be like a lot. You'll be like super confused when it comes to like labbing or innovating your character or like improving with it. So with all that being said, in terms of like what every sig on Bryn does, because this is like kind of just became like a, a Bryn mini guide at this point. You have all these things on Bryn, right? And then when it comes to labbing, it's mainly about looking at things like damage, um, recovery frames, and like knockback, and also hitboxes, of course, and also how they could affect your hurtbox. Like there's all kinds of like uh, properties like that when it comes to like labbing your character sigs, because most of your labbing is going to be either from having high decks and having like unique combos or playing a character with like the max amount of decks on that weapon or if you have like very unique sigs the main thing is to look at things like hitboxing so this sig is obviously huge so we can like look at like where where can this hit like where can we use this like for example if i'm doing an end line on spear and my opponent is like kind of staying on the ground and they're kind of like moving around on the ground i can just Enlighten the D sig. It covers literally everything and kills early and does insane damage. And because it does so much damage, it's optimal because it's better to do an enlighten the D sig instead of an enlighten in the side light and like try to soft read a, um, with like a nair because the D sig will just do more damage and, and it can kill. Looking at um damage is very important when it comes to optimizing your character. Like for example, when I play Orion, there's some times where I don't do it uh, an enlight on spear. There's some times where like my opponent will miss and I'll punish it with the D sig on, on spear because it just does more damage in an enlight. Like if I know, um, I'm not going to do as much damage, um, as I could, I'm just going to do a sig if I can do a sig. Like, let's say the, uh, Artemis, w uh, whiffs, right? Let me put them at a very low damage just to show you guys. Let's say the Artemis, um, whiffs like a Lance Delight, right? I'll go, instead of like trying to punish with the end light like this, what I'll do is I'll do a D sig into a D sig. So I'll do a D sig to get more damage than an end light. But then off of that D sig, they're still like really close to me. And I can dash D sig again because if they cross up, they get hit by it. And if they don't cross up, they still get hit by it. Because Orion D sig is like end light if it hit behind you and in front of you. So, and also stacked. So it's like you, you get the whiff punch with the D sig and then do it again. And it happens extremely fast. Like it's a very fast call out. The only way to get out of it is to like jump really fast out of it. If they even hesitate for a second, they'll get hit by it. Even end light. Um, or I'll, I'll lose something where I do like a D sig into an end light because D sig and end light is a really fast combo. Like that three piece right there, extremely good. Like, cause it covers if they cross up and if they don't cross up at the same time. Same thing, you can do this on Ada, Bryn, Seven. Any character with like a 360 hitbox, you can, if it's fast, you can just opt to do it instead of end light. So re replacing light attacks with sigs to prioritize damage and also coverage is very important because let's say I want to do an end light into an end light. There's so many things that you can do to get out of that combo. You could just back up or like you could even like um, jump dash jump in front of me. There's like a lot of things you can do in terms of like um, like hard reading with the end light. But if you replace it with the 360 sig, like you're able to cover a lot more options while also doing more damage. I imagine if you didn't know that Bryn down sig on spear did about like 29 damage, 30 damage, basically 30 damage. How much does end light do 15? So this D sig is worth two end lights. So when you like look at the damage, you think of things like that in your head. So like when you do an end light into D sig, you're basically doing end light into end light to end light. You're hitting two end lights worth of attacks in one attack. So it's like looking at things like that. How much does side sig do? 27 damage. So it's like when you look at damage numbers, it puts like a different perspective on it because you start to realize like you can really start taking stocks in like seven hits. Or it's like you can take a stock if you just hit like three sigs. But the main thing is just like understanding what things you need in a character anti-air um cross-up read sacked option read things like that like replacements with light attacks like most characters will have some kind of cross-up read or some kind of offstage thing that they can do so like for example not only does wuxiang spear and sig barely hit above the ground and can catch like any jump and also is, is get off a side light it's a extremely strong cross-up read because the same way you can edge guard someone like this and end sig them when they get up you can reverse it or just do this so like you can approach someone that's on the corner of the map and they might like when you approach them they might jump into the stage like this and you could walk up to them and you could do like a reverse end sig to cover them you look at okay what's my attack that what's my sig that hits like right in front of me side sig okay good what's my anti-air 
Ensig. Do I have anything that can cover my stacked option? Not really, but you have Desig. And Desig does do 31 damage, by the way. Insane cross up breed. Like, okay, I don't play like Wu Chong that much anymore, and I have not really innovated Spear Desig, but I'm sure that someone can do it. I would not be surprised if someone started playing Wu Chong and would approach into a cross up breed. Because look, it hits almost behind you. Like, you really could approach someone with a huge wall like this and read a cross up jump. So, like, even then, like, j just now, I just figured out, like, some new things that you can do with Wu Chong. You can cross up breed with a Desig like this. And you might be able to even combo off that. So, like, maybe in, like, maybe in some case, if my opponent spot dodges and I catch them with this, I can do a, a, a D light off of that. Maybe it's unjumpable. Who knows? I don't know, but, like, just things like that where you look at cross up breeds, dodge punishes, and see if you can combo off of it, too. Another thing that I was talking about was hurt box shifting. This is real, this is real, real, real sauce that I was talking about. Um, that someone who was it cyan gaming told me about and I, i've i've had like a theory on this for a while but certain characters sigs can shift your hurt box i think the best example of this is on mako i guess so because it's putting me like up in the air i'm not i'm like basically invulnerable to any grounded attack so if i approach with the wushong d sig and my opponent's on the ground trying to hit me like i'll avoid it and hit them but example of hurt box shifting is like katara side sig your hurt box goes under the ground so like let's turn on uh hurt boxes and hit boxes you see how my hurt box gets very small and I come back up with a slash that almost like it's like an anti-air. Mako side sig can like you can shift your hurt box and make it smaller than come back up with a swipe. Oh, another thing on Mako too. Mako also has a very strong like um recovery game. On Mako, your side sig hits like that. So the same thing I was saying with Brin, how you can read cross-ups with like reverse side sig. You can play Mako and literally make your your hurt box small as shit. So you won't even get enlightened here. Because you see how my hurtbox is shrinking? I, like, I can't get enlighted here. So they can't even do like a sword enlight or a spear enlight because I'll be under the stage with a, with a, a ducking hitbox. Like my, my hitbox is like shrinking. It, it's like ducking under the corner of the, of the, um, of the map. So like, let's say I'm edge guarding them. And the, the door is like right here, right? I'm trying to get back on the stage, right? I could just reverse side take, go off the stage and hit them from there while not being able to get hit because my hurt box is shifting. And on top of that, like you have um, certain true combos. So for example, you also want to see if your character has any SIG true combos. Like that's how seven got lab. So you can do N SIG and the GC side light true unless they nerfed it. I'm not sure they took it away. I'm pretty sure you're able to do it though. Oh, maybe they took it away or maybe it's a different combo. Maybe it's N SIG and the D light also. Oh, they nerfed it. I remember when it was a true combo. Maybe they took it away. It's one frame now, though. Because I don't even reach the ground in time. Oh, yeah. GCD light. There we go. So, NSIG and the GCD light is a true combo. So, like, if you happen to hit an NSIG on Mako, you can just gravity cancel D light true. So, that like, that's one of like, the small optimizations I'm talking about when it comes to, like, learning your character. Yeah, like, Teros has NSIG and the Silent Nair true. Ramen has DSIG on Axe and Silent Nair. Or DSIG and the D light also. Um. Seven has side stick in the end light, side stick in the D light, Sarah side stick in the side light. Plenty of like small optimizations you can make on characters when it comes to sig true combos, like on gun characters. A lot of gun characters have true combos off their D light with sigs. Like Vrax and Ada both have D light and the side stick true. I think Isaiah has some kind of D light combo true. A lot of characters have D light combos at low percentages. So let me show. Cause it's just like another, another small like micro adjustment that you can make. So there we go. True combo. You like side sig. Things like that. Just like knowing what your true sig combos are, figuring out like the purpose of all your attacks. But there's like so much stuff you can lab when it comes to just like dodge punishing and cross up reading and anti airs and air combos and edge guarding sigs.